All right, guys, we are live. We're live. Thank you for joining us for Coach's Corner. Really the best part of this stream. I love it. It's a long intro. It's like a two and a half minute intro. It's a solid, solid Coach's Corner. Did I, did I go pass out? No, unfortunately I did not, but I'm exhausted. Uh, we're going to make this one good and quick and awesome. Uh, it'll be fantastic. You'll see. Uh, so, today we're talking about raid etiquette and a little bit of guild etiquette. And you know, you're a raider. What is okay to do? What is not okay? And there's a lot of you guys that are either new to raiding or uh, are coming back to raiding or just really aren't sure. You know, you, you're just still not sure of your elbows and your buttholes and which one is which. Uh, so, we're going to talk about that. Not really your elbows and buttholes, but we're going to talk about raid etiquette. Now, in a raid setting, you want to, you know, what do you want to do in raids? Well, we what we do in raids is kill bosses. We, you know, we're here to have fun. Thanks for, for resubbing. You can wait until after I'm to the coach's corner. Uh, and, you know, have fun, get loot, kill bosses, that kind of stuff. It's a good experience, right? It makes memories, right? Get those 1% wipe memories. Those are some good ones, trust me. Because you remember, you'll you'll learn for the future. Uh, you always want to. Well, you don't always want to wipe at one percent. You, you want to kill bosses, but when you do wipe by one percent, it's just like it's so close. It's so close to a kill. But you have a limited amount of time to do that in a given week, right? So it is important to get that done as efficiently as possible, right? Like you're there to have fun. You're there to you know do lots of fun stuff. That being said. You want to do it efficiently. And what does efficiently mean? Well, without wasting too much time. I mean, a little bit of time, fine, for jokes or whatever, but without wasting time. Uh, so whether you're, you know, a one-day-a-week raid guild, maybe like Zeros to Heroes, sometimes raiding two days, or you're a four-days-a-week raid guild like my guild, or whatever. You know, we raid 12 hours a week. In that 12-hour time period, my guild has to kill all the farm bosses, you know, kill Archimond on whatever difficulty for uh, upgrade rings, and, uh, and yeah, and you know, then we want to be doing enough on progression. We want to get enough attempts in to get that all done. But if people are wasting time and things are slow, well, that cuts into the overall amount of attempts, right? And the quicker you kill a boss, the quicker you're done with content. And the quicker you're done with content, the quicker your vacation starts, right? Your two days a week of raiding, or your one day a week of raiding, and your farm runs, and that's what you want. So, uh, starting really from the raid leadership, though, you know, you want to delegate the duties. And, you know, whether it be zeros to heroes or here, in my guild, here's what we do. Um, in, my, in, in my raids, we have myself raid leading, as well as Brand Hista raid leading. So we're mostly responsible for um, the raid setup, you know, throwing down markers, setting up cooldowns for that specific comp. I'm typically responsible for getting people in, in the raid. Uh, so we have a big spreadsheet of who needs what bosses. I just pick and choose, you know, based off the composition. That's really my responsibility in the raid. That's it. Uh, we have a number of people doing loot. I'm part of the loot pr pe uh, procedure as well. So, you know, when I, an item drops, I'll get whispers on a couple items. You know, Bran and some of the other vets will get whispers on a different item. And we'll give it out because we run that loot council system. Uh, Bran was more responsible for cooldowns, whereas I, I do a little bit more with invites. Um, it makes it a lot easier that way when you do delegate responsibility. So, for example, you know, in Zeros to Heroes, Yendar, what is Yendar? Everything. Everything, right? So, it's really important to delegate the responsibilities of, you know, one person does invites, one person does, you know, the railing, the, the mushing, right? Telling your tanks to pull, or, you know, when the tanks can go, be responsible for pulling, right? Nonstop, keep the raid going, keep the raid flowing. There's no point to just to kill a boss. And wait there for 10 minutes or 3 minutes or 2 minutes while loot's being sorted out. That's time saved. That's another pull of a boss. Right? That's another pull of a boss. Go kill. Go attempt more bosses. Or you could just sit around the boss, you know, singing Kumbaya and, you know, hoping loot gets sorted out. So, uh, delegate responsibilities wherever possible. Now, as raiders, so you're, you're new to the raiding scene. What is okay and what is not okay? And what, one of the biggest questions here I get on stream, you know, how do I become a mythic raider? Do you have some tips for me? I'm getting into heroic raiding or mythic raiding or whatever. And what do I always say? Well, prepare yourself. Like, better than Illidan, prepare yourself. Right? That means basic knowledge of encounters. 
That means, you know, you've watched a video or a fat boss guide or one of my guides or you've done some dungeon journal stuff or you ask some questions, right? That is basic raid preparation for your guys' level. Enchants, food, coins, flasks, all that stuff, right? You don't want to get to a raid after, you know, waiting there two hours or waiting outside the instance for two hours or doing whatever and you have no flasks. You know, most guilds this day, in this day and age, they provide everything. Whether it be repairs and flasks and potions and foods and, and everything. It's all provided. So why don't you have it? Listen, you unique snowflake. Why don't you walk... No, you don't even have to walk over the guild bank. Apparently, guild bank is an ability. As one of my hunters found out recently. If you go to your... Where's my... How do I open... Spell? There. Apparently, guild bank is an ability here. This mobile banking. You throw it out a guild bank... You get some pots out of there, you're set, right? How difficult was that? But you want to come prepared to raids. And you know what? Coins, get them on Tuesdays. The first thing you do when you log in on a Tuesday is probably go get your coins so you have them for the entire week. Yeah, and you know, Zix here has a great point in chat. Our master looter takes the loot and sort it out while meanwhile we're doing trash and that's kind of decent. That's exactly what you want to be doing. That is efficient. That is absolutely efficient. That's, that's what we do too. We have one person pick up all the loot, we take towels, we move on to the next boss, and next boss and just keep going, 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 going. So, that's what you want to do. Yeah, keep it efficient. Um, that's good. Very good. So in terms of, you know, coming prepared, get all that stuff. You don't want to be that guy that, you know, is holding the entire raid up while you go get coins. Sorry guys, I have to go, you know, hearth out, then go to Storm Shield, then get a summon back. Oh, we don't have any Warlocks? Well, now you have to fly back, and then what? Like, you wasted everybody's time. It's a big... It, like, respect is a big part of it, right? Remember, on the other side of that screen, everybody's a human being. How would you feel if you had to wait 5, 10 minutes while you're trying to get new bosses down, right? That's 10 minutes that cut into the boss's time because you weren't prepared. Well, guess what? There's four other guys in your raid, and they did the exact same thing. You've now wasted 40 minutes of the raid's time. And now you don't get to try the new boss. You know, you have a bad raid night, you don't get to kill the same boss as you killed. Because you didn't come prepared. So what else does preparation mean? If you have Ventrilo or Mumble or Forums or, or whatever, you should have all that stuff set up well in advance. Like, I know we all procrastinate and that's fine. But at the same time, again, it's a whole respect thing. Forums. Forums are are a big part of a lot of guilds, right? That kind of communication, a lot of the information is on your forums. So do get set up well in advance. Don't be, you know, whispering for an invite and you don't have any forum access. How do you get on Mumble? Well, you know, the Zeros to Hero stuff, the, the DJ stuff, it's all in the forums. It's all there. So you're telling me, we invited you on Tuesday. It is now Friday. And in that four day span, you couldn't take the 30 seconds to make a forum account, get it registered, get it activated, and then pull the mumble stuff up? You couldn't do, like, was there something really important in the however many hours are in four days, 96 hours, that you couldn't take 30 seconds to do that? Oh, that sucks. Well, guess what, unique snowflake you. You're not getting a raid invite. You are not special. You know, Kevin Spacey said it best, you are entitled nothing. You pay 15 bucks a month, and get, yeah, that gives you access to the game. You're not entitled to raid. Show everybody the same respect that you would like to be shown. Right? That's what it all comes down to. So, you know, quick little thing here. If you're in Zeros to Heroes now, if you're one of my subs, and you want to raid on the weekends or, you know, be, do all that stuff, do get your forum account set up. You know, go make a post, do all that stuff. Totally fine. Go do it now. We won't be raiding until... Saturday, or no, next Saturday, yeah, until next Saturday, right? Or maybe sometime during the week. But you do want to have it set up well in advance. But your time is important. This is true, Tech Fire. Your time is important. But so is everybody else's time. It is all extremely, extremely important. So, treat others with respect. That's all. Uh, so, now let's say you're in the raid. What is okay to do in a raid and, and not in a raid? Is it okay to AFK in a raid? Yeah, of course! You're all human beings! It's totally okay. Listen, I know, like, one of you had Taco Bell based off my, my Twitter last night, and somebody asked if it was a good idea, and I knew it was a bad idea. But they're like, no, Taco Bell's a good idea, it's always delicious. I've personally never gone. 
And then you got to go AFK, right? You, you, you got to go AFK when? Well, the best time to go is usually during trash. That's usually the most efficient time. The worst time to go AFK is right before a boss pull or during a boss pull. Like, hey, listen, I, I know you really got to go, but like either get your man diaper or your adult diaper on or hold it for a little bit, right? Just just hold it. Just just hold it. It's okay. Or go after the wipe or go after the pull. Don't go during a boss attempt, right? If you need a quick 30 seconds, if you need to, you know, get away from the keyboard to take a quick bio break, to uh, do something quick, grab a drink, grab a snack, something, totally fine. However, do tell your raid leader or do tell somebody that is responsible, right? In my own guild raids, listen, in Death Jester's Mythic Raiding, if somebody goes AFK, I expect them to let one of my raid leaders know, myself or whatever, whatever, and we communicate it in our raid strat channel or our raid group channel. So-and-so is AFK for a minute, or so-and-so is waiting outside the instance they're on an alt or whatever. So we're all aware, right? It's all about communication. Don't randomly go AFK. Don't. Like, even my sub raids, I t like, we try to keep things going really, really quick, and I say, listen, guys, if you ever need to take a quick little break, just let me know. Totally fine. Go take one. But I should know. I, I don't want to have, you know, some random person standing, you know, at the last boss, and I had no idea, right? So... Take a bucket, right? Make a mistake to go poop. <laughs> Don't wipe the raid to, you know, to go to the bathroom. Don't. Um, I mean, and a lot of it just, you know, when you're going AFK, don't go AFK every single trash. Listen, the rest of the raid is not there to carry you during trash. Trash is part of raiding. Listen, you got to kill it. There's BOEs that drop, right? There's BOEs that drop. Uh, if you're new to raiding, a lot of the trash has the introductory mechanics for that specific boss. Uh, what, what are some... I can't remember. There's a lot of trash in Hellfire Citadel right now that will show you the boss's abilities based off, you know, how you kill them. Uh, but don't go AFK every single trash pull. Listen, whatever you have in real life is not so important that you need to, between bosses, be gone for 15 minute periods. You don't. Listen, and if you have to go, then you probably shouldn't be in the raid. Right? Or you should have let your Riddler know well ahead of time that there might be intermittent breaks. Here's an example. Here's, here's a good example of that. Um, back when Driaz was taking her exams or studying for exams, she said, you know, hey, I'm going to take, I'm going to have prolonged AFK periods here between trash or whatever while I'm studying or preparing notes. Right? So she was there, you know, in, in the raid, uh, but she was, you know, she would have to get rezzed or whatever. But again, let people know. She let the raid know and the raid was fine. Now, and this one is to you unique snowflakes out there. This one's an important one, too. Um, you're not special. Okay? It doesn't matter how good of a player you are. doesn't matter how good of a player you think you are. You should be running back. Unless you are analyzing logs, you know, between attempts when you're going from wipe to wipe to wipe. If you die, whether it be on trash or a boss... In general, you should all run back. And I know LFR is really terrible for this. And I like whenever I do an LFR with randoms, I try to teach them this too. If you died, you hit the release button, and you do the walk of shame all the way back. Or just the walk all the way back. It is okay. You just run back. Listen, you're wasting people's time by waiting for a res. Like, what are you doing? In the five minutes that it took us to kill trash, because, you know, we pulled too much trash, right? The rest of the raid was running back because we were, you know, dying, dying, dying. But what were you doing? You were just there. You're not helpful at all, right? So here's another example. You guys remember the first big pull in Black Rock Foundry? And sometimes you pull, two, like, all the packs, right? And people start dying. Well, what do you do? The entrance is ten seconds behind you. You could hit a release, come, come, come back to the fight, contribute to it, and if you die again, you die again, big deal, right? Repairs are all free anyway. But don't just sit there and do nothing, right? Do run back. Do run back. Now, there's a couple cases where you shouldn't run back, right? And, and those are few and far between. For example, if you're on Gorefiend, Gorefiend, you should not run back. I mean, if there's somebody that's going to res you, um, get mass reses out, you know, do all that stuff. So, for example, when we're doing Mythic Raiding, and I call a wipe, and, you know, we wipe it or we reset the boss, like on Tyrant. Or if I say, you know, there's a mass was available, do not release. Don't. Quick bugs, thanks for resubbing. 
but don't release because it's going to take longer for you to run back because we have no warlock in the raid than it is to, for you to get rest, right? So listen and be on the same page. Okay, listen to be on the same page when it comes to, you know, releasing reses when it's okay. Have the raid leader make the call. Now, in terms of raid communication, you know, who, who talks, whatever. Um, in most guilds, I mean, every guild is different. I've modeled Zeros to Heroes after Death Jesters, right? Death Jesters has been run one way successfully for the past ten and a half, almost eleven years now. Uh... In terms of communication, like, we, we joke around during trash, we, we talk, whatever, like, we joke around a lot. For those of you that heard our mumble before, um, it's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun between, you know, between boss skills. Um, that being said, right, when it comes down to bosses, you know, it's all clear-cut communication, you know, we're calling cooldowns, we're doing this, 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 it's all business, right? It's, it's all business. Um... Don't talk over the raid leader. Even if the raid leader is like talking during trash and trying to do commands or mark up targets or you're trying to, you know, assign kill targets for trash or whatever, or ask questions, don't talk over the raid leader. The raid leader, and, and I'm going to say this, even to Yendar, is the most important person there. They are leading you herd of cats to kill the boss. It is a very difficult job heard all of you and make sure you're able to down the boss right there's so many different personalities and different you know skill levels and they're trying to deal with loot and move the next boss and set up cooldowns there's a lot of things to do when they're trying to talk don't talk over them they are the most important person which is part of the reason I had when we did our sub raids I would have priority speaker right which means when I spoke the uh, mumble or team speaker or whatever we ran automatically lowered everybody else's voices, right? Because whose mo voice is most important? Obviously mine, right? Well, really, the raid leaders. So let the raid leader talk, let them make, um, you know, let them make the important communication. Now, let's say you're in a raid, right? And you've got guild issues, you've got raid issues, and this is to all guilds. So, I don't know, your, 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 your raid leader's in a raid right now, your guild leader's in a raid, you're all raiding, killing bosses, and somebody inside your guild or outside your guild or whatever messages you, right? And they're like, you know, so-and-so, I don't know, did something mean to me. Like a bunch of little children, right? Like six-year-olds. So-and-so is not sharing their toys. So-and-so took too many flasks. So-and-so is, you know, doesn't have their gear prepared. So-and-so, like tattletales or whatever. Listen, they're raiding right now. They are trying to focus on killing bosses. Babysitting is going to have to wait. If you have issues, they can wait until after the raid. It doesn't have to be dealt right there and then. So, example. Um, here's an example. And this is, you know, a lot of this will apply to Zeros to Heroes. So, Yendar's doing a heroic raid, and he's setting up his composition for the bosses. And so-and-so, you know, one of the Zeros to Heroes or subs or whatever, and they're really unhappy because they didn't get invited. Well, they didn't get invited because they're, you know their 670 item level, and they're the fourth tank, right? And Yendar invited the two tanks that were, you know, geared for progression, that kind of stuff. And and this is not a real situation, obviously. Um, and, and that person is, you know, really upset and asking, why didn't I get invited? Why didn't I get invited? Why don't you invite me? Invite me now. Damn it, invite me. Damn it, Yendar, invite me. And they're whispering. Well, listen, like, first of all, that's really childish, right? Don't spam the raid leader. Number two, it can wait until after the raid. It can, you know, they can, Yendar or myself or whatever will explain to you afterwards why you didn't get an invite. Why, you know, invites are not favorite based, right? Like, even though, you know, Yendar and I are best friends, you know what I mean, I'm not going to invite Yendar. I'm going to invite whoever I need to get the kill done, right? And that's how raids should be done. And I know a lot of you guys have had issues um, with your old, you know, crappy guilds, and not current crappy guilds, but old crappy guilds where... The GM invites his wife because otherwise he gets nothing. He has to sleep on the couch and she's really bad and all she does is pet battles and, you know, she wipes the raid out nonstop, but the GM does nothing about it. You know, being a good raid leader is also respecting the other people in your raid and getting the right people in there, right? Not just playing favorites. You know, in the same sense where... Um, or I've had to set, sit Driaz out or I've set myself out. It's not playing favorites, right? Like... I like, like, I have some good friends in the guild and Death Jesters. That being said, I will, you know, invite 
the people that I like slightly less because they are better for the raid. You know, um, do I have any examples that are online? I like Roshi. Roshi's a good guy. Okay, here's an example. Roshi is a lot for the stream. He's uh, he's a great druid. He's you know he does a ton. You know he's a good guy. That being said, for Mythic Tyrant, I'm gonna bring Karnik because Mistweavers are amazing for that fight. And guess what? Roshi has to sit. Right, but that is part of the that is part of the rating game, right? It's progression rating. We're at a fairly serious level. That's what got, has to get done. Um, that being said, like if you're in a very casual guild, maybe you do have room to bring the people that are new, right? Or for another example, in our second Zeros to Heroes raid, it is more of a teaching run, people that are new to raiding. So Yendar took one group, Freezing Hero took the second group, you know, for normals to get geared up to do heroics, right? That's, that's you know, both different sets there. Bring Galvin for every fight. I wish I could. I would love to bring Galvin for every single fight, for sure. Um, so those things can wait. You know, let's say you're dealing with loot and you run a loot council system or whatever system you want to run and you didn't get the piece of loot that you wanted. You didn't get your epic golden mustache comb. That's a running joke in Death Jesters. And you didn't get it. Well, Raid Leader, why didn't I get the golden mustache comb? I needed it. I, like, I need it. You don't understand. Yendar and whatever Raid Leader is you have, I need that mustache comb for my mustache. Well, listen, the raid leader's trying to raid lead right now. Those questions can wait until after the raid. You don't have to stop the raid, you goddamn prima donna, and ask about your golden mustache comb. You don't need to. You don't need it. So, don't bombard the raid leader with a million messages. You know, hopefully there's enough delegation between, you know, in, in my guild, for example, if I set up all the form access, right? Brand, Driaz, whatever officers we have, their Cub, Thec, uh, they don't do any of that. I'm the sole person that does form access. So people will always go to me, and that's fine. Um, do you need form access right now? Well, you, you could message one of the officers, Vets and Zeros to Heroes, right? Or whoever does it. You could also send them an in-game mail, right? And for those of you that are Zeros to Heroes, right? We have our Sparty Smallwood forums here. And here it is, there. If you need, is it, which is under here? Not under here, oh shit, go back. Uh, news, there, new registration and form access. If you need form access, guess what? You don't need it right away. However, you know, this is, these are the people that can give you uh, form access on our Zeros to Heroes forums. Majits, Ariana, Yandar, and Roshi. Those four people can give you form access. How do you get form access? Just, oh, this is sub-access here. Um, just make a post here, and they will add your name to the list, like ready, like Sleepy33 or 23 and Desh Jr., and they'll give you form access. Likewise, if you're looking for guild access, where's guild access again? Is it Wonder Warcraft chat? No, it's under public chat. That's BlizzCon 2014. It's somewhere it's here. There we go, Zeros to Heroes Guild form access. There. So this, if you're, you know, a Zero to Hero, this is what like all users see. Zero to Heroes members, subscribers only. So there's different sections. And you see here, Mr. Cog. Mr. Cog is looking for access to guild forms. That's it. And he'll get his access in the next 24 hours. Guaranteed. So, yeah, four unique snowflakes. Anyway, um, again, things can wait. Try not to bombard the raid leaders. You know, it's stressful enough trying to raid lead without the other million whispers, right? It, it's it's okay. We're here to chat, guys. Don't be afraid to chat with me. I log on to, you know, I logged on to uh, Zeros to Heroes earlier. I said hi to people. I, I'm, I'm happy whispering people, too. I messaged Shellstars the other day, see how it's going. Um, whoever, you know, throw it to Nikki San or, or whoever is around. Like, I'll chat with people. It's okay. I had one guy. Uh, his name is Gray. Right? Uh, asked me about how to bind his keys. So I spent like 10 minutes talking about binding keys. Don't be afraid to, to whisper at people. That being said, you know, take a look at where these people are. So let's say I'm in my garrison, probably not doing anything, right? Who knows? Just send a whisper. Uh, if people look like they're in Hellfire Citadel, they're probably raiding, they're probably in the middle of something. But if I'm in Stormwind, I'm likely sitting in Trade Chat showing off my Ashburn and my Invincible, right? I, I may not be doing much at all. 
it's okay to send in-game mails, whispers, that kind of stuff to get people, uh, you know, to get stuff done. I'll buy them too. I post my reliter every. Yeah, don't don't do that. Don't post the top five DPS uh, every fight to your raid leader to show him why you're awesome. No. Oh man, oh man. Uh, what else? Some people just do their roll to show interest freezing. I've seen it. Yeah, I mean whatever works. Whatever works for you guys. Uh, whether it be zeros to heroes or your own guilds. Find something that works, and part of the you know part of the pains of growing as a guild is making mistakes and figuring out what's good and bad for people. Uh, Sparty, how much of your performance is being lowered because you're focused on raid leading? Most guys I've talked to, the raid leads say it doesn't affect them at all. Like as style, I think they're full of shit. They're they're full of crap. I think it's super rare for raid leading to not affect your performance and babysitting. Like I, I've I've almost never heard that that it doesn't affect your performance. But when I took a poll of my raid leaders here. You know, the heroic and mythic and normal raid leads, they said roughly 20% is how much it affects you. I could not stream the next raid and see how I do if, you know, you want me to prove my point and just have somebody else raid lead. Uh, but no, it definitely does affect your performance. How much? It varies person to person. Okay, uh, and now we're talking about what else? Uh, you know, when you was, let's say, uh, here's another example Yendar is doing a raid lead, or I'm doing a raid lead. And do you whisper somebody, right? Well, usually when you whisper somebody and they're mid-boss fight, it says, hey, so-and-so's mid-boss fight. Like, who can I whisper right now? Let's whisper uh, Cub. Test. Damn it, he's not in the boss fight. Uh, well, I guess he's not in the boss fight. How about... Damn it. What are you doing, boss? Um, so it'll whisper you back, like DBM or Bigus or whatever, that they're doing a boss fight, it's been engaged, you know, how many people are alive, that kind of stuff. If they're doing a boss fight, don't message them anymore. Okay, don't, don't message them. It's okay. For another example, when I'm talking to Del, the other paladin that I talked to, and he was on Mythic Archimond, and so I asked him a question, the message went through, and I got the, the bounce back response uh, that so-and-so has pulled Mythic, uh, not Manor, the Archimond. I'm like, oh, cool, never mind. And I just stopped messaging him then. I'm like, listen, the guy's got to focus. I'm not going to message him anymore, right? So it's okay. Like when somebody's busy, they're busy. That's what busy means. So um, yeah, check to see what people are doing. You know, is it an emergency? Listen, I had one casual member in my guild leave guild the other day. I was doing a sale run. I was streaming. I was, you know, in the middle of, you know, trying to get things going. It's a sale run. It, ha it reflect has to reflect really well on my guild. So we're carrying there, you know, five other people uh, that are relying on, on our performance to get things going smoothly. I have 19 other guild members counting on me to keep the raid going, you know, make the assignments quick and quick and quick. Um, and then somebody, you know, messages me, hey, I'm really unhappy, so-and-so, I'm a friend of the guild. What would you like me to do right now? Stop the raid? Stop my stream and give you my undivided attention? Why are you more important than everybody else? Like, stream, stream aside, right? Like, why is this one person that is a friend of the guild, not a, like a full rating member, more important than everybody else? Well, they left at some point. I, I don't know. Like, I was really busy with a lot of things. So, why? Why... I don't understand. Let me drop everything that I'm doing and focus on you primarily. Gotcha. 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 Yeah, you know it'd be awesome for the people that like, if we need a, a day off, like some of you guys need a day off, like Midgets or Yendar or whoever need a day off, um, it would be nice to have finally that appear offline on Battle.net option. So, when I need some time to myself, I can go play Hearthstone and appear offline. Or I can go play Heroes or StarCraft 2 or Warcraft on my alts and appear offline without having to remove everybody off Battletech, right? Wouldn't that be awesome? So, yes, unique snowflakes. Thank you, Daniel Pearson. Um, anyway, so that comes down to raid etiquette. Now, for you raiders or Sparty whispered you once while I was raiding with Zeros to Heroes, yeah, but you're not important for below. 
I, I know you can do a million things at once. Um, so when you're again, you're whispering people, you're uh, you're dealing with you know guild etiquette. Is there a different way to contact them? Let's say you need forum access. Let's say you need something out of the guild bank. Let's say you have a question that can wait till later. But listen, you're in a rush. Is there any other way to contact them? Could you contact them on the forums, in-game mail, any of that? You definitely could, right? There's nothing wrong with using other means of communication to um, to contact them. So people, let me go, actually, hard back to my, actually, do I have a, oh, whatever, I'll just hearth. Here, let me go, because I don't have a mailbox, obviously. I'm gonna hearth over. People contact me, like when I'm not online, or they don't have my battle tag, and things can wait, they will just send me in-game mails. As soon as I, over there. You're important, that's kidding. Still starting Yender and ask me, okay, yeah, I mean, there's lots of people you can help, right? Uh, where's my inbox here? Or mailbox. See, I get lot, look, look, look at all the whispers, like the mail I have here. One guy, even our buyers looking to buy runs here, somebody question, questioned by recruitment, heroic hellfire, you know, all that stuff. Postmaster, look, even the postmaster sends me mail, right? I mean, that's part of his job, too. So, yeah, it can wait. It can probably wait until later, or they'll get to it. It's not like unless it's an emergency. Let people do the do their own thing. Then you have the option of clicking the visit tag. Though people will still message you. Yeah, uh, you do have the option of going. You know, hey, I'm busy. I'm busy. People are still gonna message you. Like, oh, look, it's red. Does that mean go? Yeah. Uh, let's see your test. No, nope, damn it, it's not working yet. Well, that's busy as always. Now, in terms of again, you know, guild etiquette and that kind of stuff, there are always unwritten rules of what's allowed to be said or what's not allowed to be said. You know, in my own guild, uh, guild etiquette is just respect each other, right? What was the one rule that I had in Zeros to Heroes? If you wanted to invite, just be a decent human being, right? Respect each other, treat each other like you want you would want to be treated. That's what it comes down to. Remember, you represent the guild that you are in. And I don't believe any of this other bullshit that, hey, you know, it's a game, I can do whatever I want in the guild, doesn't reflect on my guild. Yes, it does. When people see you out there, when people see me being, you know, a little shit, or turning my mammoth into this giant mammoth and blocking the mailbox just to be a little shit, that is reflective of your guild. Because the rest of these monkeys here in trade chat, you know, they don't know you. They don't know, you know, what your guild is like. But they will base that off of you. So, just be excellent to each other, right? Just be excellent to each other. That's what it comes down to. Right? Don't act like an ass. Unless your guild's full of asses, then by all means. Let the assholes join your guild. I will know which guilds to stay away from. You know, help other people. You know, we help you people here all the time. Whether it's, you know, the, our highest end raiders like Clipper, like Dell, like Shuttle, uh, like Fibrillo. Those guys are top end raiders, yet they're still here with us plebs. Gracing us with their skill and knowledge and presence and, and tips and that kind of stuff. And their humor or whatever. They're good guys, right? They're paying it forward. They are helping make this community a better place, right? In the same sense that, well, that's what we're trying to do here. So, I'll hear the zeros to heroes, of course. Daligan's here. Fantastic. My mount's better than yours. Uh, so, again, pay it forward. You know, when you go into LFR, and like Nikki says here, right? Don't be an ass. Don't be that guy. When you guys at Zeros to Heroes do LFRs, people will recognize you, and it does happen all the time. And people will ask, hey, are you that guy, you know? Are you in Zeros to Heroes from Sparty's stream? And you'll be like, yeah, I'm in that guild. That guild is awesome. So again, this is your uniform. Wear it proudly. Wear it proudly, right? If you're known for being assholes, people will not go to your guild. But if you want more good people in your guild, well, lead that way. Lead. Lead. And again, it all boils down to, at the end of the day, respect, right? People, like the officers, you know, like myself, uh, if it's my guild, myself, Bren, Driez, we are not here. Like, I don't spend my day 
waiting for people to message me. I, I don't. I'm doing things. I'm usually doing something, as are other people, whether it be alts or farming something. We're usually doing something. We don't just spend all day. These are my office hours whenever I'm online. It's part of the job, though, right? Like, and I tweeted this a little while ago that it is a glorified chat room. Or, I mean, it has been for a long time. I used to have an office in Ironforge. If we go fly to my office right now. I would have this office in Ironforge. It was next to the mailbox. People would always see me there. And they're like, hey, what are you doing? Well, I'm, I'm typing to people. I'm chatting with people. Why do you think I have so many days played? 880 days played in 16 hours. Because I would talk to a lot of people. And a lot of it is just, you know, chatting with people, dealing with issues, you know, talking about stuff. You know, Brian and I talked about stale runs earlier today. I talked to some of my other guild mates about other stuff. You know, we're not just waiting there for your whispers, right? We're doing stuff, so be cognizant of that. Be aware of that. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're a prima donna, go suck an egg. Go eat a stick of butter, right? If you're a horde, go eat a rock. You're not unique snowflakes, right? We're all trying to play this game. We're all trying to have fun. And the quickest way to burn out your raid leaders and your guild leaders and your officers is just to wear the crap out of them. We need a vacation, you know, after that, so... Uh, again, you know, if you were in a raid, or if you were the raid leader, put yourself in ra their shoes. You know, don't demand raid spots, right? Like, if they're not going to invite you, they're not going to invite you. Just because you're in the same guild does not mean you're going to get, a, you know, an invite right away. Right? Because you didn't bother to sign up with the forms, or have mumble access, or get anything set up. But you want a raid invite because it's Saturday or Friday, or whatever the day. The day, you know, it ends in Y. No. But again, treat others with respect. And that's what it comes down to in Coach's Corner for today. Is there any other tips you raid leaders, you officers, you people want to add to my Coach's Corner? Let me know. Spread was a big RP here. Yes, I was a big RP here. Yes, absolutely. Server faction name changes hurt server guild and uh, guild identity reputation was huge back then. It was, and I still believe that. Here's my office, by the way. This is where I would stand for years, just chatting with people, right here. Sometimes over here on this side. Sometimes just running around in circles around this mailbox. This is my office. Moongrad special, yeah, Moongrad specialist. But yeah, that's what it comes down to, right? Like just treat each other with respect. You know, get your prep work done. You know, and try to be as efficient as possible with raids. And if you're a raid leader or if you're leading raids like Yandar, delegate a lot of that responsibility. You to the right? Yeah, this is usually my spot here. I mean, and then you have the positive note. Yes, you know, that's the last thing to finish off with, right? Like, it's a ton of work. Raid leading sucks. Some days it sucks. Like, it, it sucks so much. Right? We promoted Yendar to an officer in Zeros to Heroes, and the first thing I said, condolences. And he understands now what it meant. Right? Uh, but no, raiding is fun. You know, why is raiding better than PvP? Because number one, Halenka didn't design it. Number two, like solving that puzzle that is the raid boss with your friends, with people you enjoy raiding with, is awesome. You know, killing that boss and, you know, this is the way our guild's going to do it. And then wiping and wiping and trying over and over and over again. It's like you're the Karate Kid and you're defeating every member of Cobra Kai Dojo. And when you win and kill that boss, you've crane kicked the guy to the face. That's what ratings like. So, number one rule of raid and guild leading and being authority: don't act like you're an authority. Well, you have to, you know, command that respect too, right? So, you sold your soul to the devil. <laughs> the poor warlock buster his soul. Okay, so we're gonna wind down for Coach's Corner. Thank you guys for watching. I'm gonna keep my stream on to chat with you guys until I have to leave. But give me a sec here. I'll answer more questions. Thanks a lot for watching Coach's Corner, guys. It'll be on YouTube shortly after this, and then we'll chat some more. Thanks a lot.